So kids, grab your hats and your bags. We're all going to a place where everything just kind of works out. Hey everyone and welcome to art lesson number four. Today's lesson is dedicated to mistakes. We've all made them. And uh, there's only so many things you can do after you've made a mistake. Painting is, you know, you can just reach up and touch over it. In fact, this entire painting was a mistake. It was two mistakes. Not really a mistake. Okay, let's, let's redefine mistake here. Let me back up. A mistake is something, an unintentional consequence, usually negative, that happens unexpectedly. You know, you didn't plan it. It's not a premeditated thing. It's a mistake. You know, it's, it's a mistake. You, you took it, and then you wish you hadn't taken it. Ticking it. Ticking it. So it's a mistake. You want to take that back. Like a mulligan when you're golfing. Oh my God, I, I use lots of mulligans when I'm golfing. That's a great, a great mistake eraser. Uh, Catholics, you know all about mistakes, don't you? You got the greatest religion ever when it comes to mistakes. I mean, the confession booth, the confession booth, that's, that's genius. It's brilliant. You do whatever you want. You sin all week. You go in that little box and you confess all the shit that you did over the week, you get a blessing from the Father, and whew, it's like the Etch-A-Sketch. Shakes the Etch-A-Sketch picture off, and whew, you get another chance. Love that. I love that. So all you have to do is, you know, let the preacher in on your nasty little secrets. That's all. You have to not be concerned what that preacher thinks of you, or disguise yourself when you go in the box. Now, when you make a mistake, it's really important to acknowledge it. Because if you don't, and you just keep on, you keep on going, that's sort of like building a, a new structure on top of a crumbling you know, piece of shit building that was ready to fall. You don't just build on top of a crumbling building. You clear off your mistake. You get rid of the of the building that was underneath there and you build a new building on top of it that's beautiful and elegant and has a good foundation. So the foundation for a mistake, the new foundation that you're laying is, it's called the truth. It's just the truth. You have to come to grips with what you did, who you are, and what you want to do. Come to grips, grip it, you know, own it. Own the shit you did. Now, if you can't own it, if you can't own up to whatever it is horrible thing you did and you're just going around in circles in your mind and you just keep repeating it over and over again, oh, I did that thing, I did that thing. That's so horrible that I did that thing. God, did I do that thing. Ooh, that was a thing I did. I did that thing and your mind is just going on and over and over and just won't let you alone. It's like a pestering little you know, midget that, that's trying to get you to be his friend. It, well, that's a horrible thought. It's, it's, uh, it's, like a, it's, it's like a dog that won't leave you alone. And, and sometimes it's cool, but if you want to be left alone, you don't want the dog rubbing its, its, its stink and, and, you know, shedding hair all over you. And it's just not dog time. It's not dog time, right? So I have no idea where I was going with that. I do know where I was going. I just, I, I lost my train of thought, which is a mistake. I'll try to do better next time. I'll try to do better next time. I wish I could wrap this up with something really, really profound. But the fact is, is that mistakes are a part of life. And it's how you deal with them that define who you are. It really is, because there's not a person alive that isn't very, very uh, comfortable with mistakes. We make them daily all the time. It's all in how you process it and whether you come out on the other side and make the same mistake <laughs> over and over and over again. Oh, anyway, I was telling, I, I do want to bring this around and then we'll, we'll call it a, a lesson. 
um, that, that cycle of thought, okay, that's the yapping dog and the midget and all of that, okay. The cycle of thought keeps bringing you back around in your head to the same disturbing mistake over and it won't let you alone. And so what you have to do is break that cycle. You have to either write it down, you need to tell somebody, uh, or you need to just say, enough, bastante, you know, that's enough, baby, stop already, stop with the whining and the going around in circles, you, you're giving me all kinds of guilt. You, you brought out a Jewish voice. I didn't even know my inner Jew. I had an inner Jew. Everybody has one. We all have inner Jews. They make you feel guilty. What you gonna do? Huh? Okay. So we need to learn how to deal with our inner Jew. I guess that's... Somehow I, I'm winding up with that. And I say, I say the word Jew with the utmost respect. I love Jewish. Some of my best friends are, are Jewish. I love that religion even more than Catholicism because they don't really, you know, they're just as likely to be agnostic uh, as, as someone, they, they, they take all of these ideas and they don't really decide on one and, and call it, uh, you know, gold. Like this is the, this is the law, there's these interpretations. It's sort of like the molecules in our bodies, the probabilities of existence they have a probability of religions. There could be one of four, you know, maybe infinite permutations of, of possibilities of the interpretation of the Talmud or whatever it is, you know, they, uh, they believe in. But what I really love about the Jewish religion is that the superstar of Christianity is Jewish. He's a rock star, baby. Jesus Christ, he was Jewish. This Jewish guy, they worship him. And, and the Jews don't even worship him. It's, it's, it's the most bizarre thing that nobody really talks about. Or maybe they do, and I don't know. I haven't heard it talked about that much. But, uh, you know, and then, then Christians, they're the Christians that don't like Jews. But, but they love Jesus Christ, the King of the Jews. Go figure. I mean, you Nazis out there, if there are any Nazis listening to this, first of all, I hope, I hope that I haven't given you any more fodder for your ignorance because uh, I'm not on your side all right I'm not on the side of intolerance and hatred those are mistakes those are mistakes racism is a mistake it's a mistake it needs to be uh, dealt with okay so deal with that deal with that and tell your mind enough is enough I want to move forward a circle goes around and around if you break the circle and unroll it bloop, you get to walk down a path forward into a better place, you know? And until you make the next mistake. <laughs> that was art lesson number four. Uh, thanks for joining me. And uh, why am I talking like this? Does it really, do I have to have an announcer voice? I don't think I do. I'm just going to turn it off now because that was a wonderful lesson. Now, friends, if you take only one thing away from this, Follow your bliss 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 That's right Follow your bliss just wrap it up and blow it a kiss and for God's sakes, follow your bliss.